Ray, thanks very much for the invitation here in Haven to Driven Engineering. Now, not only have you got some fantastic machine tools and automation, and that's really why we're here today, but you're big into motorsport as well. Tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, so, I grew up racing since I was 13, started off racing stock cars, and now I race on the circuits. Uh, yeah, something I've always done, to be honest. And then, yeah, I've ended up working in motorsport as well. So, yeah, it's almost taken over my life, really. Yeah, it's quite interesting, actually. I mean, uh, I've uh, raced motorbikes myself, and obviously, uh, you know, I've never been an, an engineer making parts. But, you know, you go, you go back to Formula One as well, don't you? Yeah, that's right. I've worked at a couple of the teams. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I've been in the teams for sort of five or six years. Uh, but even before and after that, uh, you know, subcontract work for the F1 teams. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of what I've always done really. I make bits for the car as well, for my own car. Uh, you know, it always helps get a little bit of advantage out of that. And I suppose uh, when you're going to market with, uh, you know, the Hermley machines that you've got here, very precise, very rigid and very accurate machines. I suppose sort of motorsport or going to motorsport companies, it's quite easy to sell this process. Yeah, it definitely helps. You know, when people see that you've got Hermley machines, it, you know, it just makes a statement to, you know, that they know you've taken it seriously. Also, I know that uh, technology transfer, you know, you're working in other sectors like aerospace and also to a certain extent oil and gas. It, is that where the sort of machines help you drive that type of work from? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as I say, when you've got a quality machine, you can do any type of work. Um, and yeah, we, we don't turn any work away. Um, and it's, it's good to try and try and get a balance between the F1 stuff that's quick turnaround, but also you know, the, the more production side of things that, you know, it keeps things ticking over as well. Now, you guys have been going since 2015 and, and this, uh, the, the Hermley 250 here, I mean, that effectively was your first machine tool. I mean, that is a big, big statement, isn't it? It was a big investment, yeah, um, but it, it's definitely paid off um, and I'm, I'm glad I bought that machine uh, because it, it's opened doors into companies because they know you, you, you're serious about what you're doing when you buy a machine like that. And today we're here principally uh, with REM Systems. Now, uh, the fantastic uh, Aroa Compact 80 you've got behind us. Tell us a little bit about the journey, why you've gone down automation route. So, I mean, we, we haven't got a lot of employees and we don't run a night shift or a weekend shift or anything like that. So for me, it made sense to, to get the automation. So, you know, we can, we can leave machines running at night and over the weekend. Uh, and we know that it's, it's going to keep running without any problems. You know, we've literally had it installed and it, it's worked from day one. And is that uh, something that you've been driving really to, to look into the future for the business to have lights out engineering? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I looked at employing people for, you know, for a night shift and things like that, but there aren't enough people around. So, yeah, it's, it's really, it makes sense to just go with the automation route and then you know that what you've set up yourself is, is going to work properly and you haven't got anyone else interfering with it. And how did you discover REM Systems or Aroa? Why did you actually go down that route? Um, I can't really remember if I'm honest. Uh, it was just, it, it's a name that, that I know is, is well known in the automation world. Um, and yeah, it just makes sense to go with that. You know, the, the, the 320 pallets that we've got on the C250, it just, it's the right size for the machine too. And are you winning more work now because you've actually installed that uh, automation? Yeah, definitely. You know, for it, it's right for a lot of type of you know a lot of work. Um, you know, and when you've got uh, a five off or a ten off or or, or more, um, you know, you can prove the first one out and leave them running overnight. By the time you come in in the morning, you've got ten done. Whereas, you know, if you didn't have that, you'd leave one running and you've only you've only got an hour's worth of work that night. So. And why did you choose the compact eighty? Um, at the time, uh, I had a much smaller space in a machine shop, um, and that was all I could fit in there. Um, so yeah, it made sense to go with that. Well, it's quite interesting you say that, because uh, this is a brand new unit. You've only been here a few months now. Yeah. Uh, you're up and running, obviously, with the help of uh, uh, REM Systems, making sure that you've got the automation. But is this sort of future-proof in your business? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's given us a, a bit of room to expand. Um, yeah, we've still got to build some offices and, and make things look a bit more pretty. But um, yeah, first thing was get the machines running uh, and we'll do, we'll do the, the nice looking bits later. And does it uh, also sort of free up having the automation system to actually free up? In other words, can you offer capacity to the marketplace? 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, as I say, you know, you, you get so many more hours out of a day um, and out of a weekend, um, you know, that, yeah, it just means you can do more and more work. And, you know, sort of finally looking at the expansion and the, and the money that you put into, you know, you're looking at uh, more machine tools. Would that be with automation in mind as well? Yeah, it's definitely always worth looking at the automation, as I say, because you need less people. Um, and it will make the machine work you know, more hours in a day. There's no point in having a machine that you've still got to pay for for the same amount you know, and only getting eight hours out of it when you could get 18, 20 hours out of it. So the future is very bright here, Ray. I, I, I presume really with the extra e expansion that you've got here, the automation, but also uh, investment in new machine tools. Uh, for any engineers that are looking to outsource uh, complex parts, what's your message to them? Uh, yeah, come and come and see us. You know, we we don't shy away from any job at all. You know, we've done we've done the halos for F1. And, you know, we've done we've done all kinds of stuff. Um, and to be honest, the more complicated, the better for us. We kind of like to show off what we can do.